Hey, this is Time Bomb. If it's your first time checking out the channel, hit that subscribe button to catch all the updates. Thanks a lot for joining me here today. I'm going to do a breakdown on my single back wing slot scheme. So this is something I've been working on a bit that I wanted to bring to you guys. And we'll show it against a couple different defenses. So first of all, the plays that we like here is the first off this inside cross. We've got that post route and that drag. And then we're going to just put the tight end on a slot. And the next play we're going to take a look at is this PA boot which uh, the left tackle which we are gonna use that corner route basically in the st we leave this stock we're just gonna block at all the uh, motion routes and the play action we do like the dive though i don't quicken it keep it in my quick audibles but it's definitely a useful play as well the next one this is probably the biggest play of it the play action Florida drive we've got that little double move kind of post in this corner road of the tight end we like and then we'll kind of change that that what is a com uh yeah comeback road we change that into uh or sorry is that a curl whatever we change that into either a drag a streak or an out road depending on what we're seeing out of the defense and the last play is this stretch alert bubble which we like to mix in to really mess people up so we kind of run all of them the whole reason that I came across this formation for me the first time, I believe, was in Madden 18 when I started using this inside cross play. So we'll take a look at this one first. We'll just go against some, uh, just some nickel normal cover two here. So what I like to do is just block everyone and then put A onto a streak. So we see we've got that uh, post route from Sanders, just B running a little drag, and Kittle going over the middle. So you can always just kind of watch to see if... You know, Kittle's going to get open. No, then we can just kind of check it down to B if that's there, you know, before the cloud gets in there. Or we can kind of just playmaker him up. Playmakering in that drag route is always a, a good idea. A lot of times, you know, you have a, an escape artist QB. You're able to a lot easier run out from the pressure than with Garoppolo. And then as I do that, I just kind of hit the right stick up, playmaker him that way, and send him up. Or you can do it a little earlier as well. And then I'll just kind of watch the coverage as well to see if X can kind of just fall in with a little possession catch there. It was a little early. It kind of needs to be a little bit more open, kind of against a cover two like this. You'll see the the safety kind of drops back and, and the, the linebacker's not going to cover it. You can kind of just kind of fit it in just like that, do a little low cat pass. That's the play that I, I used to always love to start games with, just that run that little one. And we'll kind of just move... We'll put Edmonds onto a blitz here, just so, we'll kind of just make it really open. So when the, you know, you can just see a read with the, the tight end, just kind of where he's going to have a lot of room here. So you just watch that. And then right away, you can just kind of throw it in there, get down, whatever you need to do. So those three routes are what I like to run. And, you know, occasionally I, I might not send the tight end and I'll just put a wheel route out of the backfield like this. Just kind of keep an eye on it, see if I can find him there. Just kind of, you know, make some sort of move like that, an adjustment just to keep your opponent guessing. So the other play I should talk about that a lot of times I'll start games off with is this RPO bubble. So you just kind of take a look at the defense. Here I see, you know, I've got three, four guys, that are five guys that I can basically pick up with my blockers here. So there's going to be some decent amount of space. You're just watching where that block goes if you need to go outside or try to cut between those two men. And if you just keep an eye on your opponent, maybe if we flip this play like that, and see he's got it kind of overloaded on that side. So you've got a little extra room on the right side to do this little RPO bubble like this. So you just kind of watch those guys, it's open, just hit the B button. Maybe you've got to make a move to get by that guy. If they hold the block, you should have a lot of room to get downfield on that RBO, so RPO. So a lot of times, you know, I don't know which way I'm going to cover it, but I'm just watching um, to see what the, the defenders over there are going to do. And then depending on that is how I'm going to handle it. So we get into the RPO, and again, I'm just going to kind of watch. See, he's got a lot of room. Just going to check it down. He is kind of beating that block and kind of burning me over there. But that's what you're looking for is what are the defenders in that area like this. See, we see here it's Johnson. What is he going to do off the snap of the ball? If he's going to move towards that slot 
wide receiver. Then I'm just going to let the RPO happen. So he moved inside. I shouldn't have. I should actually have been paying better attention that time. I was kind of anticipating him uh, going towards it. So let's try this one more time with the RPO. And again, see, he kind of moves inside. Then you go B back. And he just doesn't have the time to get there. And got way better blocking, actually, with the CB over on that side of the field as well. So I was able to break that off for like seven or eight yards. Sometimes that's all you need. And a lot of times your opponent's just not ready for that. If you're mixing it in with the stretch and the dive and passing out of this formation, it really throws those people, they they're, can set up for the run, but then they get the pass against them. The next play we'll look at is this uh, PA boot, which, see, it's got that corner. It's all about the corner route, so I tend to run it more when we're on the right side of the field, and then it's got that streak. You know, if he burns them, you can put it up top, and you've got that little in route, about 10 yards, that you can throw as like sort of a check down as well to your tight end. But a lot of times I'm throwing it away if I'm not throwing that that corner route or recognizing the streak's going to be to press coverage or something. All I do is I block RB and Y so that the play action is canceled and I just have a little extra blocking on the outside. Just kind of watching this. Can it get over the corner? I didn't think it could. Not that time. You covered it too well. I shouldn't have thrown it. You're really looking um, for those times when they're, they're overloading on a blitz or it's kind of more backed up sort of kind of thing. This, this kind of look. Maybe if it was flipped, it might have an easier time. Let's see. Again, same setup, just blocking RB and Y, and just kind of watching the coverage again. See, it's not getting in there. I'm gonna have to throw that away, but I can't even throw away in time. So that's, this play can be a little more risk reward. I tend, like I said, to only throw it when, when the ball is on this side of the field over here. Not doing a very good example against it. Maybe we'll switch to a cover three. Let's see how that look, get the better look there. Three show two. Let's see if we get a. I feel like it might have a better chance of getting open. Let's see. Yeah, see, that's going to find that window a lot better. So that corner route is one of those dangerous corner routes that can really get open. You got to be. It is annoying to defend and it can really create a problem. So I'll run that just for that corner route mostly. And sometimes a streak and the little in and, and whatnot. The next play is kind of my bread and butter play, I would say, for this. This uh, Florida Dive. Is that what it's called? Florida Dive. Yeah, P play action Florida Dive. I don't know if that FL stands for Florida or not. Please correct me in the comments about that because I should probably know. Um, so here we go. Oh, I audibled. So like I was saying, it's got that double move. And that double move is one of those routes that can just get open over the middle all the time and you can get this little nice little spec little catch too on it see like right there see you probably shouldn't catch that but if you time it right at the end of that move a lot of times you can get it to make that catch uh and like i was saying the tight end is on a nifty little corner route here i'm not sure how the cloud in this is going to play it in the nickel we'll see but a lot of times this just will develop to get open right Oh, he kind of got bumped a little bit, and they were backing up, playing it pretty well, actually, so I'm not sure if it would have gotten open. We'll try it against a cover three to kind of show it off a bit better. And I put X just on a... Oh, we don't... Okay, there we go. We're into the play. Block, R, B, and Y. I'm not sure if I mentioned that, so you've just got those three routes. And then you put X in a drag or streak or out route, depending on what you're seeing. This is a cover two. I know... Oh, wait, did I put him into a cover three? I do have them in a cover three here, so... An out route would work pretty well against that but on the X, but we're going to just try to show off this corner here. Pressure, see, right there, it's going to get over that guy's head. He's just not able to play it a lot of times. It's a, it's a tight window, but you can get that in there so much. It's a play I love to use in the end zone from, like, the 10. I get a lot of touchdowns with it running that. And then just on the other side, just depending on what you're seeing, right, like, you can just adjust accordingly. If I know, like, my opponent's in a, or this computer's in a cover two right now, So I've just got him on a simple drag. So I'm just kind of seeing, oh, I don't know if I can throw this or that. It's kind of close. So I'll just put X over the middle and just kind of make a quick little play. Or you can playmaker him up depending on who you're using, what abilities you have, and just find him open there. Or if it's like a cover three, was like I was saying, you know, coverage might be a little backed up. Um, you can just kind of put your that guy into his little out route, and you should be able to find that. I will, you know, take advantage of people... If they're running out routes, like, and are not, you know, you're giving me that much space to make the play, you can make that catch on the out wrist, you make, throw it right on the break, make a little spin move, and sometimes you can go right downfield for touchdowns, so that's just money as well. 
I don't have it in here, but a lot of times I'll use the dive or just audible over into a dive out of single back deuce. And these, this little play too, if you're audible into it, it makes it a little more obvious. So a lot of times I'll come out with it um, just so I can go into it if I want to. But you get a lot of space off that dive. It does a great job, even audible into another play with it. Or I'm out of the Bills playbook here and you've got... Um, Gunwing slot, this inside zone as well you can go to. This can really burn people. They're kind of a little caught off guard by it. So he finds that little hole right there to the side. He's able to bust out it. Yeah, I get a lot of great big gains with this. I had a really great weekend league where I started 9-1. and one. Only finished 17 and 8, but started 9 and 1, so that was pretty impressive. <laughs> Using running this offense the, the whole way, basically. And is there any other plays that I've missed here? I feel like I've gone through all of them. Inside so cross, PA boot, Florida drive, and stretch. So we're going to take a look at some of the gameplay footage I have using this as well. All right, here we go. In the gameplay footage, we're going to take a look at here. The first play we see, I'm just kind of taking a look at the reads here, and I'm going to playmaker B up off the inside cross. See, just make that nice little read and that catch. Here again, inside cross, just watching B. See, as I roll out, I playmaker him up, and that's kind of a tight throw, but, you know, I'm able to burn the user by just throwing it a little outside. Again, just watching B come over, playmaker it early. Kind of messes up the user when you do those playmakers and kind of get upfield on him. Here we're seeing this that little corner road again, just burning some coverage, just using that corner road anytime in the field or in the end zone here. I used the little in route and I'm able to just find the, the little window between those defenders where I'm able to get it in there. Wasn't a touchdown, but it's pretty close. So next here, we're going to show some of this RPO off again. See, we've got the little cut inside. You don't necessarily have to go outside with it as well. When you see the blockings there, then you cut back right in the middle. See, I cut around him outside that time. Make a move once on that last man. You were able to bust for first downs, if not touchdowns. Here again, see, I take that window inside, make a move to beat him. Almost that next hit. Big hit. I'm lucky I didn't fumble there. Look like Sean Taylor. And again, see outside. A lot of times you just notice that you just have the numbers to run it outside. You don't even have to use that bubble as much, but you can use it there. Make the move. So do a little spin juke and you can bust those off. Look at that, like 20 yards on that one. It's tough when you've got to kind of got to be careful because you can fumble the ball in those situations as well. And then it's like a scooping gore. A lot of times you're just throwing it behind you at the line of scrimmage. So even if they just, it's not an incompletion, it's a fumble rather. So you do have to be careful with those. And it's super annoying when it happens. All right, here we've got a little dive up the middle. Like I was saying, those can get some huge windows open for you. We're able to just burn your opponents or it's at the end of the half like this one. See it? Look at this dive, cutting it back, find the little hole. I'm gone for a touchdown at the end of the half. That's the dream right there. Against like a quarters three deep running for a touchdown. Barry Sanders, that's the thing. First weekend that I've actually used Barry for the whole weekend league. Only did like eight games before and I was killing it with Barry. All right, so the next formation we've got here is our bread and butter, as I call it. And we're just taking a look at this. See, watching for the corner route. When that corner route is open, I try to. I, I will. I can pretty much recognize it pretty much right away when it's open. I don't throw a ton of picks. Sometimes I force it and throw the picks, but usually I do a good job just reading that. See the pressure coming in. I just get it up top. Almost users at that time, but luckily just threw it. He's anticipating the streak. Just watching that route. I've got Kittle there as well, so he makes a lot of big catches for me using it. And then when I'm in the end zone, like I said, love to go to it there, so I'm able to find those. I've been using that was one of my main red zone touchdown plays as I got to the 10, 15, 10. As I got closer, it was a little tougher to run, but it's having a lot of success with it. So definitely going to it. Wanted to try it at least one out of three three plays, and if I have you know three chances inside the 10, and then again a little little route there to the outside all I did there was just to have my my X route like I've been talking about using you know, a drag a streak or an out route I use the out route there here again we're just, I think we're watching X come over in a little drag and then I playmaker him up and I'm just gonna find him he's just gonna fall into the end zone for the touchdown so a lot of luck with those and then like I was saying that B route if you just get the timing down and can just note the coverage is breaking, you throw it right there. He's going to get that little dive and catch animation all the time. It's I see this is the route that I see him get this animation more than any other. And see, boom, in, to, in between four guys, that dot. And, you know, if I see that single back, single high safety, rather, it, it, it's a lot of times it makes it easier to read that. This one's a little tight, but he still finds it. That was all the animation that helped him make that catch. And... 
even though there's Swan here, we see him get over top, and he's gonna find that guy open in the end zone here, all the way, what a play, on the run, throwing it up top, that route can beat the coverages deep that way, like any of those developing posts, that's a cover three beater waiting to happen right there, so... That's my scheme, just basically these five plays, mixing them in. I find I'm able to really destroy some opponents. I have a couple other schemes that I kind of go to after that if they do adjust pretty well to it, and I try to mix this in with the run and the passing, and I have a lot of success. So try out this little scheme. See if you can have some success with it. Let me know how it's going. Appreciate you checking out this video. I'm Tom Bomb. You guys are awesome, and I will catch you later. Boom, boom.